Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Goa Ahead. And the matter that we are discussing this week is about Goa statehood. We are entering into 36th year of Goa statehood on Monday. What have we achieved in these 35 years? Whether statehood has really benefited Goa? How many advantages did we receive? How many disadvantages did we face? I have three eminent panelists with me. First, I have Nyanpit Awardee and renowned Kukni writer Damodar Mauzo. Bhai, welcome. Next, I am joined by economist, educationist and principal, Professor Dr. Manoj Kamat. Manoj, welcome. And last but definitely not the least, I am joined by political analyst, lawyer and former legislator of Goa Legislative Assembly, Radha Rao Gracias. Radha Rao, I will start with you because you are kind of a semi-politician on the panel and you have seen uh, the Union Territory Days as a, as a politician and a political thinker and a post-statehood days also. So when you look at these 35 years, uh, what is your thought process? Have we really gained or we have lost more than we hope to gain? Uh, uh, Pramod, you know, I get the feeling that we Goans never got what we were promised or what we deserved. Now, I would like to go in a bit into the history of, of Goa uh, in modern history. You see, we, we were liberated on 19th December 1961. But if you look at uh, the actual legal history of Goa, it looks like we were not so much liberated as we were annexed. See, what happens is um, the, the question of Goa and its right, rights of Goans went up to the Supreme Court in criminal appeal number 50 of 1968. The judgment was delivered by a five-member bench of the Supreme Court, comprising of Justice Chief Justice Sadayatullah and four others. Hmm. Now, in that judgment, even the Supreme Court has observed that the appellant, Reverend <coughs> Father Montero, is a resident of Goa. After the annexation of Goa by India, I am stressing on the term annexation as stated by the Supreme Court. Now, this annexation, word annexation was used because of the submissions made by the state of Goa, hmm. which read, the acquisition of territories in international law, the contention on behalf of the state is that by occupation is meant occupied by armed forces or belligerent occupation and occupation comes to an end by conquest following, followed by subjugation. Now, this is what the state government said, that Goa has been conquered and annexed. And then the Supreme Court observes the occupation of December 20, 1961 was neither belligerent occupation nor anticipated occupation, but true annexation by conquest and subjugation. Now, this unfortunately appears that we are being treated as a territory which has been conquered, annexed, and we are being continuously subjugated. Now, I will go a little more. Hmm. You see, 10 years after Goa's liberation, under similar circumstances, India liberated Bangladesh in December 1971. And India entered Bangladesh on, for the same reasons as it entered Goa. Namely, the people were being harassed, intimidated, and they wanted to be free. But in Bangladesh, India entered Bangladesh, liberated Bangladesh. And the difference is that the Indian army withdrew from Bangladesh. So difference, therefore, is Bangladesh is liberated. And we have been conquered, subjugated, and annexed as stated in the Supreme Court. Hmm. And sadly for us, we are being treated as such. That is why every time there is something wrong, we have to go on educating, we have to move the Supreme Court, go off, go foundation has to go everywhere. So my impression is that after these 35 years, we are still being treated as a territory that has been conquered, subjugated and annexed. And the term liberation is used only, only to hoodwink us. I will straight away go to Manoj Kamad. Manoj, do you agree with that? Because, Absolutely because, not. It hurts me. <laughs> it hurts me because after 61 years, of, of freedom after 61 years of we getting liberated again the same theory of education and the same theory of conquest has been raked up time and again just to prove that we are not one indian please understand that we might have got liberated later whether in the legal terminology whether you say it's a conquest or education or liberation we are a part of sovereign india and let us not forget to uphold the values and the right of being an Indian and respecting Indianness. 
with this spirit let me talk about the statehood see some way my good friend radharao seems to getting get getting confused with the liberation and the statehood and when he meant of 37 years he meant 37 years of statehood and not liberation which was 61 years ago uh, pramod ji uh, what thing i have noticed is after the uh, after the statehood we have got liberated politically in a sense that we have got politically more powers not only in terms of we getting a full fledged governor but we getting our rights on the basis of the finance commission and all other things mm. what a complete or a full state really enjoys the question now today is whether we have utilized this particular benefit of being a complete and independent state for the betterness of every goan in the state and that is the point of the debate today but i have many points to add in that last 35 years not only politically we have become independent but then we have also been able to put goa on the world map of tourism we have put goa on the world map of secularism and we have put goa on the world map of intellectuality and that is that is the true identity of goa but then some way we have not been able to bring in something called as financial independence or financial prudence we have made a mockery of the political system in a sense we have seen number of defections and the worst cases of defections uh, being uh, being such a worst cases probably in the country but then something the spirit of governness the spirit of unity the spirit of holding and respecting every religion with with the, their due respect is something what governors stands today for and i am very proud about it. we'll go to the finer points of uh, that 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 those opening remarks of yours including the political instability which started within 3 4 years of we getting statehood but i'll go to uh, bhai now uh, bhai how are you looking at it because you have seen goa as a union territory you have seen goa as a full fledged state as as manoj mentioned the, there was more autonomy more political power more economic powers but do you think those those the, those powers that autonomy has really translated into well being of the people of goa yes, thank you pramod well uh, you said uh, i was uh, privy to in in territory days i have seen the statehood coming but more importantly i have seen the portuguese rule hmm. i have been through it and i was a witness to uh the day goa was liberated i was on the streets of margao mm. witnessing how the army was welcomed by the people of goa leave aside that uh, partly i concur with, with uh, what doctor uh, said earlier in his opening remarks uh, it is true that goa was conquered politically or diplomatically if you say that but it does not mean it was against the wish of goans besides uh, the state has always said goa has been liberated they never said goa has become independent the very difference between the word the term independent and, and liberation we can make out there is some distinction between the two anyway as our uh, we are discussing on the topic of uh, statehood you see i was an activist right from my childhood i was part of uh, the struggle for uh, during the opinion poll against the merger then we got in in territory and then we demanded uh, this uh, official language status to konkani also demanded for uh, statehood which we got why we did want uh, statehood we weren't content with the union territory because union territories are uh, dominated or uh, reigned by uh, by the center hmm. so we need not want center to decide the future of uh, goa so that is the reason why we wanted statehood yes the goa as a state is a small state as compared to rest of the states yeah. our population is also limited but then we should uh, see why nehru perceived to see goa as an independent state why nehru thought that goa has an independent identity so for the very uh, same reason i would say uh, we were demanding statehood so that we also wanted to prove that a small state can be better administered besides probably it was our naivety that uh, we thought 
that since Goa is a small state and all politicians or all people of Goa know one another very easily. So it would have been very difficult for the leaders, political leaders, to enter or uh, indulge in uh, corruption, particularly at a lower level, at a public level. But it has not happened so. I agree uh, to some extent that Goa has benefited by statehood, but our dreams have not been fulfilled. Uh, I'm on, very sorry to state that. On, on that very, very important and crucial and probably provocative point, uh, I'll go back to Radhabab. Radhabab, two points. Number one, uh, we wanted more autonomy. We did not want center to decide everything for us. But if we see the state of politics and economy today, that for every small little decision, our politicians take a flight to Delhi. There is For every small little problem, there is a high command sitting somewhere dictating the terms. So, so by, maybe by letter, we became a state. Do you think in spirit, we are still the union territory? See, what happens with, with Goa is, unfortunately and very sadly, since, uh, since liberation, uh, we are not accustomed to think for ourselves. Mm. Possibly that is because, even in the Portuguese era, we did not think for ourselves. We had to do whatever was taught to us, because there was no democracy then. And the same mindset appears to have continued. Now, for all that matters, after Goa was liberated, uh, we were denied certain things. One, uh, official status was denied to our language. We had to fight for it violently. We know how, how it was got. Statehood was not granted to us just like that. Mm. Even though historically Goa has been existing as a separate entity for much longer than the Republic of India has existed. And still, our status was not recognized. Attempts were made to merge us with Maharashtra. I see no reason why it had to be done. Because Nehru had promised that Goa's separate identity and socio-cultural milieu would be promised, but mm. would be maintained. But that was not done. Every attempt has been made from then to now to overwhelm us. Our people are being overwhelmed. You see what happened? We are a small territory with a small population. People are simply march marching in from everywhere. We are told we are all brothers and sisters. Fair enough. But the problem is when we are a very small state and when the rest of the country is huge with 1.3 billion people. And if you allow unlimited entry of these people here with no restrictions whatsoever, Goa is certainly going to disappear as it is disappearing. No one can dispute that Goa, which we felt earlier as our own place, is no longer existing. This is happening because our interests have not been protected. That is what I meant when I said that we were conquered and annexed and subjugated. We were never treated. We have never been treated as a people, special people with special interests. So, and that is why on and off we demand a special status. If we had, if we were happy, we wouldn't be demanding a special status. Uh, this is my grievance. Manoj, same point. Do you think we are we are still dependent on Delhi? Rather, Delhi is practically taking every decision, political or economic, right now for Goa, and our politicians are complicit and a willing and also willing participants in this of the book kind of a process. What, what what you are saying is I, I partly believe with you and I partly agree for a reason that it is politicians who have failed us. Mm. Today is for every decision if you have to rush towards Delhi, it is because of the political system. It's, 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 it's the political setup and it never happened earlier. As long as the power rests within us, as long as there are regional parties which are there to support the interest, things would go fine. But as long but Whenever there are parties with national interests entering into a small state, and then Goa is such an example, and similar things happen also at the northeast where the uh, states are of smaller size, this is bound to happen. This is because we haven't got the financial autonomy in its real sense. And that too, for all reasons, if you are dependent on the fi for finances at the center, hmm. we are bound to take their diktats. And that is what is naturally happening. So being independent, being liberated was the first part. But then what we failed is to be independent on our own. Today, what do we see, right? From our daily milk, our daily bread, to daily eggs and chicken, including fish, we need to depend on other states. And that is the reason our economic model has failed us. Right from industrialization, right from being self-reliant, the cooperative movement in Goa has failed and, and we have been failed on all the accounts from all the sides because our leaders have failed us. Uh, on that point, 
you fought for during language agitation you lobbied for statehood and the the political instability the era of defection i i i won't say that the era has ended i think the last 5 years have abundantly proved that it still continues but the ugly side of uh, goa's politics which started rampantly after within 3 to 4 years of statehood were you disappointed as a young man then for, were you disappointed to see the state going in that direction i'm certainly disappointed hmm. but i don't blame the state of the condition <laughs> okay. because it would probably uh, was given to us uh, on a platter rather though we agitated for it and probably we expected too much from the state would mm. but what failed is our politicians mm. not the state would the failure is on the part of people who runs the state mm. who run the state mm. and but actually what we wanted is a, a state without corruption corruption free it did not happen and we thought that the uh, decision by, all the decisions by are you saying that we had are you saying that we had too much expectations from the from the concept of statehood we were over expecting yes uh, probably yes besides another thing another aspect we have to notice hmm. uh, when goa was liberated from the clutches of the colonialists we were not ready for the democracy hmm. that existed in india we were not ready for the political political situation of uh, to face the political situation in india we were not ready for the elections hmm. so everybody from the center and the problem the neighboring states wanted to come and help us and misguide us so we were more misguided than guided hmm. that is the reason probably we opted um, our we find our leaders uh following wrong path hmm. uh, now corruption i i would say corruption is rampant today hmm. when we expected that every goan knows one another it would be very very minimal you would be happens. shy of asking money from each other that's what you expected uh, yeah that's what i thought so <laughs> but it has not been now, so. now you feel that it was too naive to think or think like that <laughs> that's true and when we opposed the merger yeah. we were all, we also wanted to protect our land yeah which have, which our politicians and our lead political leaders and other leaders also mm. have probably disappointed us i the, the land of goa is no more belongs to goans on that but i'll go to the next point and rather bab i'll i'll want you to start with that and the second most significant thing post statehood is the rise of bjp uh, bjp not only uh, increased its seat tally and vote share but became the primary pole of goa's polity uh, do you think that post statehood this is one of the most striking developments in goa's recent history uh, pramod yeah. i would like to touch the previous point a bit okay no problem go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah see what happens is on corruption it is easy to blame the politicians hmm. but but i am inclined to believe that all this is happening because as a people we are essentially dishonest <laughs> overwhelming majority of us are dishonest mm. and therefore we cultivate dishonest politics mm. after all in a election you get a chance to reelect a man every 5 years but we reelect the same fellows the more corrupt you are the greater is your chance of being reelected mm. so it is one can't simply wish away corruption by blaming the politicians there has to be reform within the voter himself you are, you are placing the blame on the corrupt society and not just the polity absolutely correct you see if you look at if you check with bai i am sure bai will agree with me mm. that the dishonesty was much less during the portuguese era it was because <laughs> there was also mm. there was also a law enforcement authority who take care of dishonesty here everybody is dishonest the people are dishonest politicians are dishonest bureaucracy is dishonest and the police are dishonest so therefore it's not easy to simply blame the politicians uh, now that apart now yeah. let uh, coming to the part about bjp do you think yeah, this, yeah. this rise of bjp is a nationwide phenomenon or do you th- do you do you see something special when it comes to goa and bjp no obviously obviously it is a nationwide phenomenon as we can see mm. the bjp is pretty strong in what was earlier called the cow belt area so in the hindi speaking areas yeah. the bjp has been able to get the people together on a religious platform see earlier otherwise indian polity has been divided on caste lines 
in the last two elections, the BJP has managed to convince everybody that it, you are Hindu and you have to work as a Hindu. Other things don't matter. So on that platform, even in Goa, the same trend has happened. Mm. One can see that people vote on lines of religion. It is not that it is anything different in Goa. Even in Goa, soon after liberation, the Hindus voted for the MGP and the Catholics voted for the uh, UGP mm. with a few votes crossing the lines. So now only that MGP has been replaced by the BJP. Hmm. Ideologically, I don't see much difference between the BJP and the MGP. They stand for the same this. Okay. So in Goa, I am not surprised at all. Yeah. That BJP Manoj, has... Manoj, how do you see this rise of BJP become not only becoming a dominant force uh, in a political landscape, but becoming the principal pole of Goa's polity? You think that's nationwide, or do you think there is something special that you can attribute uh, to the rise of BJP in Goa? Emergence of BJP as a next power all over the country can be attributed to the dissemination of the Congress mm. and that is it is directly proportional, inversely proportional. But in Goa, rather than the BJP's uh, emergence and dissemination of the Congress, one thing we have seen that after the statehood, we have seen dissemination of regional interests, mm. dissemination of regional parties, dissemination yeah. of regional leaders, dissemination of regional politics. And I think that is the more dangerous mm. trend. I'm not worried whether BJP is up and Congress is down. I'm only worried that the voice of Goans, the high command where we say Goans will decide. Goans you, are, you're, you're talking about a transition from a MGP, UGP to BJP Congress. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very true. And I think that is the more dangerous sign because when we have national parties ruling smaller states, whichever it is, whether it's Congress or the BJP, we certainly have no savior. We certainly have no war, no one who would hear our regional voices, our regional aspirations, and that is what is the most uh, dangerous uh, thing. Which is Manoj, before I go to Bhai, uh, why do you think that happened? Why why this shift? Is this a shift in uh, public mentality? Uh, is that a kind of an effect of statehood where we, we suddenly started getting assimilated uh, more into the national political thinking or there are other factors? No, the, I think the basic factor is we not being able to produce good leaders, good thinkers, good intellects who would uh, guide the state well. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have that, that there is an intellectual crisis. When there is intellectual crisis, your state is bound to be doomed. And that is what exactly happened. Uh, so we are, born, we are born intellectuals, but when it comes to politics, we have made wrong choices. And then we have not given chances to people. And so therefore... Uh, we have seen uh, that the regional aspirations were never taken into consideration. You're, you're, you're calling us intellectually rich but politically bankrupt. That's a very nice way of putting it. I'll go to Bai. Bai, why do you think this has happened from MGUG to BJP Congress? Do you think this is a Goa specific thing or you feel that nationwide the regional sentiments are being overtaken uh, by the national interests? Yeah. See, MGP, UGP was the earlier, uh, earlier part of Goa's yeah. liberation, of Goa's statehood. After statehood, most of the times Goa was ruled by the Congress. Not only in Goa, at the center also. But people were frustrated hmm. with, the, um, with the corruption and maladministration and bad governance. Not only in Goa, but in India. And I think BJP had a good chance to capitalize on these sentiments prevailing in India. Mm. Besides, this is not only a national phenomenon. I think the, if you have a, take a look of the politics that is going on in the rest of the countries, and many countries mm. are following the rightist path, mm. which is also one of the reasons, because I think um, we are... No, but, but 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 when you look at our state, when you look at our state, there we had two very strong regional parties, and and if you see it today, there, there, there is there is no regional party that is in any dominating position. Why do you think that shift has happened? Where do you think these regional parties fail? I think most of the uh, in most of the states, the regional parties have uh, gained only with the help of national parties. Hmm. So in, in any case, or uh, whether it is MGP or UGP, they would have to take, uh, uh, say, support from a national party, which happened to be Congress. Mm. But again, I come back to that, that because Congress 
did not satisfy uh, the uh, aspirations of the people. This, the BJP had an easy walkover and they capitalized on that. Uh, Radhava, before I conclude, final words to, uh, to you. Why do you think this shift happened? MG, UG to Congress, BJP. Uh, what did the national parties do that the regional parties stand? So what happens is, one, one reason why regional parties failed was lack of finance. Hmm. Num num second reason is, Goa was unique in the sense that unlike other states, there was never any thought process that Goa is one. Hmm. From the beginning, if you have noticed, there was a large section of the people who dis disowned Goa, who believed that their mother tongue is not Konkani, who believed that Goa is part of Maharashtra. And so at all points of time, there were always two streams of thought. There was never one single Goan political party that was emerged because of this two thought process. People mm. saying voting for Marathi, people voting going with Maharashtra. Mm. So when, when the people are divided in such a way, it was not possible for one single party to evolve. Now gradually the Maharashtra party segment has shifted to the BJP. Earlier party it had shifted to the Congress. And the UG has largely gone to the Congress. Mm. So therefore, now there is no scope for a regional party. Because Goans do not seem to think of themselves as one. Only now, more recently, the RG came and made some noise. Hmm. But they were not highly effective. But they did manage to create some sort of a feeling that we Goans are one. And the others are trying to damage us. Yeah. Uh, Manoj, I'm completely out of time. Bye. Thanks a lot for joining me on this panel. A very, very enlightening uh, discussion, a very in-depth discussion. We can go on and on, but we do to the paucity of time. I need to stop here. Bye, Manoj, Radhavab. Thanks a lot for joining me. Keep watching. Go ahead. Thank you.